the question of like how feminism plays into the sexual revolution and the degree to which are we living in a patriarchy? Are we living in a matriarchy perhaps? You know, are women miserable? Uh, if so, like why are they so miserable? Anna Kachian had some really interesting insights on that. Can we roll that? So all of us here on stage are the winners of the sexual revolution and the sexual revolution is the winner of the culture war. We finally found a way to have it all and yet we're still not happy. Realistically, men really only had a few decades of enjoying the fruits of the pill before Title IX and Me Too made male sexuality presumptively illegal. <laughs> and yet, here we are still having the same debate from the same assumptions. Women are objected, objectified and oppressed, though it's no longer clear by whom. The patriarchy is alive and well, though apparently there's also a crisis of masculinity. No offense, but the idea that we live in a society where men are in charge is funnier than anything Tim Dillon has ever said. <laughs> Both men and women are invested in maintaining the fiction that women are the fairer sex, not operating out of ordinary incentives, just like everybody else. Um, if you disagree, you're either autistic or an incel or both, which means you're right wing and you're not entitled to an opinion. Um, the problem we now face is that this unofficial style has been officially baked into the system. The most problematic legacy of feminism is that it made topping from the bottom the top-down procedural thing. So my beef with the sexual revolution has less to do with its inco incoherent attitudes towards sex than with the way the resulting chaos has been leveraged to capture the institutions, the university, the media, and so on. Um, what this means in practice is getting rid of the sexy 60s counterculture stuff while keeping the sexless school marm HR department stuff. <laughs> I mean, this is the view that I think most closely aligns with how I look at things. Uh, I really appreciate her bringing the Title IX and Me Too era into this and basically saying, if, if we're living in such a patriarchy, why is it that there is so much, um, you know, so many, so much HRification of our institutions that end up uh, in many cases depriving men of due process and acting uh, frequently with this assumption that they have erred, that they have done something wrong, um, when in reality, the facts don't necessarily support that. How did you react to Anna's clip? I mean, she's like, I'm quite sympathetic to a lot of it. Um, again, this, this might be like the part of the opposition that I like agreed with the most. Um, it's like I said, like feminism happened and like men don't have a place anymore and this sucks. Um, to be clear, I think it's worth it. I grew up, I grew up in a culture where we didn't really have feminism, and if it was worse than the way men have it today, uh, quite clearly. But that doesn't mean men don't have it bad today. And I think like we're just like a bunch of primates, kind of reacting to what came before in non unnuanced and uncompassionate ways. And I think like as a culture, we're sort of doing a thing where like man, women had it shitty for a long time. Uh, now men should have it shitty. What are men good for anyway? Which is another big part I, I feel like I don't hear talked about. It's like men used to have the function of dying in wars and fighting bears. Um, and there's no more wars and no more bears to fight. But like women are still giving birth to children and having to do childcare. That's like an ancient burden that hasn't gone away. And so we're like, why, why men? Like, I think we sort of culturally figured that like the balance of inherent gendered uh, obligations is now... Um, no longer like men are paying their fair share in some way, which of course is not their fault. But I think this is partly some of the reason why we're seeing this general backlash. Um, so we just need artificial wombs so then we can make it even. <laughs> yeah, was... I mean, what I hear in that clip is that there's a, uh, that, you know, Anna thinks, and I think there's a lot to what she's saying that the discourse is sort of stuck in a past reality that, it does not exist anymore in like, that in some ways it doesn't exist what's that in some ways it doesn't exist well, but... i mean like there's pockets like i grew up in this world like the, there's there's echoes of like treating women like shit that still happen yeah. um, mm -hmm. and i think in most like like western media liberal big city culture that like where these people are coming from they're not very exposed to like women being treated like shit but across the world in conservative cultures like women don't have rights um, and in like okay. conservative cultures in the uh, America still, women like are treated like secondhand citizens. Um, give, but, give viewers, I mean, Zach and I know a little bit about this from uh, an earlier interview uh, two years ago that we did with you, um, but give viewers a little bit of a sense of the background that you come from. 
yeah, just conservative, fundamentalist, evangelical, homeschooled Christianity yeah. in Idaho. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, pastor type dad um, and a stay at home housewife mom where I was expected to grow up and become a housewife. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I remember asking yeah. my parents, like, why why do you think I should go to college if I'm supposed to be a housewife? And they answered, well, you can go to college to get a little bit of education so that you can homeschool your children and, of course, meet a husband there. Um, mm. And so I'm like, oh, that's my life. Yeah. So, so do, you, do you feel like there uh, there's a sort of romanticization going on in, in that debate? Because, uh, I mean, I know I, I watched the whole thing in preparation for this and you know, both Luis and Anna say like they're not for, you know, getting rid of abortion or rolling back access to birth control. There's basically no policy changes that they're proposing, but it seems to be more about a vibe or something like that, uh, it, especially in Anna's case, like that we have this weird battle, ongoing battle of the sexes that is mediated by some HR type bureaucracy. Um, so like, I mean, do you share that sense? And uh, is there a way to break out of that sort of rigid regulation of sexual norms without reverting to the like oppressive, uh, you know, a barefoot in the kitchen for every woman past. I uh, there's this uh, like the concept of um, <clears throat> wait I'm actually forgetting the term, but it's like when a new religion starts, it's really aggressive and terrible at surviving. Like uh, early Christianity, or, or like what new converts to Christianity tend to be way more devout and insane than people who like grew up in it for many generations. Like when Islam first started, it was like Gur, kill everybody, and now like we have a lot of people who are Muslim have like a watered down version. Um, I think this is like a natural process, and I think right now we radically changed our tech. Um, suddenly, we're having sex without getting pregnant. This is crazy. Society has changed very rapidly and i think that we're in the process of like very early stage cultural re rearrangement i have kind mm -hmm. of good faith that like in the same way that a new social tech in the past like took a while to like calm down and stop destroying everything like we developed sort of a mimetic immunity in the same way we're going to have this like we're like trying to figure out how to handle it like people have freedom and they're mad at the previous thing and they're like lashing out and reacting and men are going ah this hurts me and like this is just not sustainable like in order for civilization to thrive, we're going to have to figure out how to move forward. And my guess is that this is not going to look like shaming women who are sociosexual. Like you can't have like a wonderful thriving society without generating backlash by alienating a portion of your members. This is just not going to work. Um, so figuring out some sort of system where we're like, hey, wide varieties of what you want are okay if you wouldn't want to do the pride and prejudice all the way to sex in the city like we're going to be here for you and also maybe have compassion for men i don't know like i think just the, like learning to have cultural compassion um because like right now men are sort of the other they're uh they're considered like in the, the villain role um and i think as more people are like giving birth to men and raising men and like figuring out how to make that work i think we're going to see us chill out culturally what was the thing said on the debate stage that you most disagreed with something oh, even to the clips that we showed oh i mean i mean i don't remember but probably if they were talking about violent porn at all that was, that's usually the one where i'm like that mostly i can find like a good argument for the other side like well yeah i could see it you know that's true for some people but with the that's always the thing that gets me is like oh yeah the okay. male sexuality like oh we're catering to like men want to just have ridiculous sex with women that what they women don't want like i mean in a way your you it seems your project is to push the sexual revolution further because you are an advocate for decriminalizing legalizing all sex work that would be a major change in american culture do you have any expectations as to if that were ever realized, what would that look like? Like what, what sort of changes might we expect? And are we, as a, as a culture, are we, are we ready for that given this ongoing tension, battle of the sexes or whatever we want to call it? I mean, like legal, re legal and culture are different questions. 
and yeah. they're hard. Like if I like were in control, would I change some laws? Sure. If I were in control, would I change culture? Like I don't think I'm. I don't. I can't even conceive of how to do that. I think it has to be a slow change. And I mean, to some degree, I'm trying by doing things like this, like being a public sex worker, and to be like, hey guys, yeah. it's okay. <laughs> There's lots of ways to be a human, and they're not wrong just because they're different from you. Um, but I, yeah, decriminalizing sex work would be a fantastic start. Um, like if you're going to protect classes at all, I would like people like sex workers to be protected along with um, other minorities. Like sex workers can't uh, often have trouble getting loans for houses, um, participating in the financial system are often debanked. Um, we've had like, you know, Operation Choke Point, as I'm sure you're familiar, went and did have a massive chilling effect on uh, anybody doing business with anything that might be considered obscene. Um, yeah. And this is all just making it hard to survive and to do business with sex, even if everybody involved is consenting adults. Um, and I think that's like a massive shame. Hey, thanks for watching that clip from our conversation with Ayla about porn laws, the sexual revolution, and the freedom to browse the internet privately and speak anonymously. You can watch another clip right here or the full conversation over here.